tell if the guys are in the same defense two years in a row now? Absolutely. Um, you can tell there's a comfort level there. There's a confidence. Um, they're able to process and articulate the game even better. Um, and you just kind of tell they've got a lot of juice to them. And, you know, they're eager to continue to learn, though. But, yes, absolutely. How does that change your job? Um, you know, you look for ways to continue to get better. You know, the, the worst thing we can do is get content. It's because it's year two in the system. There's always room for improvement. So I'm always looking for the little things, always looking for an edge. You know, how can we get better? Um, never rest on what we did today, always trying to find a way to get better. Does it make it easier to do that? Um, you know, it's, it's easier to talk ball with them and to uh, talk through plays and uh, successes and failures. So they understand, OK, dang, that's the why again. OK, now that makes sense. Where last year was more still trying to get them to understand why that mistake happened, you know. So um, no, it's been it's been pleasant, but they're eager to learn. They're eager to get better every day. They're humble. They're hungry, and uh, we just want to keep continue to do that. Okay, when we t talk to Jim about you know, young talent, what they maybe need to do to take the next step, he kind of explained it is they got to dominate the twos first before they can move up. With guys like Sonny and Kai specifically, as the two young guys we're talking about, that room, have you started to see them take steps in that direction? Yeah, absolutely. Everyone has gotten better. Um, in their own right, but there's still room for improvement. Um, you know, we're looking for those 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 edges, those inches. You know, what can we do to get better? So when the that their numbers call, you know, we make the play. So, you know, everybody's getting better, um, including Kai and Sonny. But at the same point in time, we're still looking for ways to continue to get better. You know, and improve. Ne Harry, never resting on that. Harry, we see the Cam running with the ones on Saturday. What's he done to earn that spot, and what's he got to keep doing to keep it? He's kept his head down and worked. And when his number's called, he's made plays. You know, one thing about here, there is no entitlements. You know, everybody's got to come to work every day. We've been competitive in everything we've done, you know, whether it be academically, uh, in the off season, in the weight room, nutrition, uh, in the meeting room, uh, everything. You know, we're competing in every facet of our players' lives. And uh, right now, you know, he's, he's thriving in that environment. And uh, he's answering the bell. So he's got to continue to do that. Seems like he and Lathan kind of took a little heat at the end of last year. Have you seen that fuel them this offseason and, and kind of you know, they've used that as motivation to get better? Yeah, I mean, there's heat on us every day, you know, um, and it's just not Lathan or, or Cam, you know. Um, we're expected to play at a high level. We're expected to be elite. And so we got to come to work every day. We can't miss a day. You know, we got to come to work every day, whether it's in the meeting or whether it's on the practice field. And that's the mindset from everybody, you know, whether it be uh, the safeties, the corners, uh, everybody in the building, including myself. So uh, that's the expectation, and um, that's what we expect every day. How's Jahad doing so far, Jahad Carter? He's doing well. You know, um, I think uh, when you make the transition from one school to the Ohio State, you notice instantly there's a difference, whether it be the competitive nature of how we go about our business or just in general, like, hey, these dudes go at it every day. And um, there's a reason why he wanted to be here. He wanted to be developed. He wanted to be even better than what he was at Syracuse. So he's come in, put his head down, uh, no entitlements, no special attention. He just wants to get better each and every day, and I'm glad we have him. What are your conversations like with Josh uh, Proctor uh, before he made the decision to, to come back, obviously, this offseason? And what went into the decision to move into the free safety spot after playing that bandit last year? You know, uh, we're always looking for ways to get better. Um, and as, as I, I assessed, you know, the situation with the safeties from last year to this year, you know, I'm trying to find a way to what's going to make us the very best. What pieces do we need to put in place to make us the very best as a football team and as a defense? And so, you know, I sat down with them. You know, we talk as men, you know, um, and uh, I explained this is what I feel is best for us as a football team first. And then I think this is going to be best for you individually. Uh, there's 110 percent trust in the room and that's where it starts. And so when we had that conversation, it was very easy uh, because there's a real relationship, real trust and real bond. Is Jihad a, a slot safety or can you play the different spots? In our defense, they got to be able to play at all just because of the formations that we get from different offenses. So uh, I don't pigeonhole them into one spot because they got to have enough ability to do more than one thing. So versatility is important. Obviously, when he was at Syracuse, he did that. So you see him moving around a little bit. So he has played the high safety at times, depending on the defense. He's played the slot and he's played man and he's been able to blitz. So the multiplicity of our defense for our safeties is, is critical in each and every position that we have. Harry, with Josh, thing, how much of that is what something maybe you see in Josh that might maximize him in that adjuster role versus maybe what you got from Lathan in that banded role last season, maybe not what he was. 
you know, my job is to always assess the room, always look for improvement, you know, um, never rest on what we did. Yeah, we made great strides as a defense last year, but there's still room for improvement. So we're continually to assess, okay, our players, as well as us as coaches, myself. You know, it starts with me. You know, what can I do better to put these young men in the position to excel, to help this football team, to help our defense, and to continue to get better and better. So it, 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 was, it was just a matter of just evaluating what we have coming back and what's the best fit for young men to excel with their God-given ability. Hey, with Josh, what, what's it like having a 24-year-old guy <laughs> I don't look at him like that, but yes, he just had a birthday last week. Um, you know, uh, he's still a kid. They're all still kids. They're just playing a game of football that they love, and there's high expectations on them. But, um, you know, he comes to work every day. He understood that he needed to come back. He understood that there was more development for him, and it had nothing to do with age because it's about a mindset. And so I'm glad he's back. I mean, he's worked his tail off, and he, you can see each and every day he's getting better and better you know, as we've done off-season workouts and in spring ball practice seven. He said he needs to just stay out of his own way. You know, it, I, I think that's, that's what Josh is just more of, just taking it one moment at a time. Don't be in a rush to get old. Don't be in a rush to go to the NFL. Don't be in a rush for the next day. Let's live in the moment. Let's live in the moment and be the very best version of yourself in the moment. And I think that's where he's coming from with that. Is there anything specific, a moment, a story you can point to to articulate what his level of focus has been like since he came back? You know, I, I, I think, you know, he's built a lot of catalysts. You know, he's had a lot of adversity. You know, you, you, you think before I got here, you know, he started against Minnesota. Then he goes into the Oregon game for his home game. And he's actually playing pretty well. And all of a sudden, injury bug hits. And he's out for the year. So you have a new coach that comes in. You have to learn me. You have to learn a new system albeit you're not able to practice yet. So uh, I think the young man has, has grown tremendously through adversity and, and developed the toughness and the callous that it's going to take not only to be the very best version of himself now, but also in life. When you bring in a guy like Jihad, who has the experience playing at this level, do you look at the other guys in the safety room and see how they respond when you get on the field to a new guy coming in the room with experience? I love all my players. I love them all. And um, I coach them all hard but I love him harder. And so um, Jihad knew coming in, nothing's given to anybody in the building. You earn everything here. Um, and so he knew coming in, I just want to compete. I want to develop. I want to be the best. I want to play at the best. And so I mean, he's come in and he's worked, and I love it. You know, he's just kept his head down and worked. He takes hard coaching, and I can see him getting better and better within the system. Perry, where have you seen the, uh, the fact that Cam played a lot last year? Where have you seen that show up this spring even uh, on the field and stuff? I just the familiarity with the defense. Yeah. You know, um, to me, that's where it shows up the most. You know, and, and Cam knows and knew that he needed to continue to get better. You know, he was injured a few times throughout the season. So just when he felt like he was getting in rhythm, here comes the injury bug. So, you know, I told him, hey, you got to stay on the field and keep working. The, 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 the whole process and the whole mindset and conversation in our room is just keep your head down and there's always room for improvement constant and never ending improvement yeah. that's that's our mindset keep your head down block out all the outside noise and lock in and let's get better each and every day when, when, you're, when you're playing guys for the first time extensively and stuff as a coach you, you got your fingers crossed nothing bad's going to happen but you know probably there are going to be mistakes right. made right and stuff do you, do you see this whole group as having gone through that gauntlet a little bit absolutely i mean we, we we we've tasted we felt We've seen adversity. Yeah. So, um, you know, going into this offseason, you know, the, the mindset is I know what that feels like. I know what I need to do as a group and individually to get better. And, and that's the beauty of coming out to practice today, coming out to practice each and every day during spring ball offseason workouts. We understand what high success is and we understand what failures feel like. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the guys have just got their head down and locked in and working. We know that you want guys to be multiple and be able to play all the positions. We know we have, you have a lot of talented guys in there, but can you just take us through a little bit specifically with Sonny Styles, the process with a young guy like that of just trying to figure out what he does best, how this team can use it, where he best fits position. You know, we, we've streamlined it for Sonny, you know, so you'll see Sonny, you know, more in a streamlined position uh, to where it can excel and utilize his God-given ability. You know, so uh, the beauty of it now is year two, I've been around the guys. They've been around me. I know exactly what they are. 
and, and where their strengths are, and we're continually to close the gap on their challenges. And so for Sonny, you know, it's just a matter of now, first year in spring ball. You got to realize Sonny didn't have a spring ball last year. He came in in the summer, you know, and then all of a sudden, here comes fall camp as a 17-year-old. So now he's 18 years old with his first full spring, and he's excelling. And the beauty of it is, like I said, he's coachable. He understands the game of football, and he's hungry to continue to get better each and every day. With that nickel spot, you want a little bit of both, but when you're trying to evaluate who you want to put in that spot after having a year of it, what is more important, their responsibilities in the run, run game or their coverage ability? Both. You know, I mean, you, you can't have one without the other just because the offense can dictate, depending on a specific set, what that guy's job responsibility is and description is. So, you know, they got to be able to do both. Um, it's not the easiest, but you don't come to Ohio State for easy. You come to Ohio State to be the very best, especially at BIA. So, you know, I'm pleased with where the guys are at so far, but obviously we still got room for improvement. And that's where the coaching, that's where the development comes in, and that's where the teaching comes in. Okay, we spent, more we spent all guys. last season marveling at Lathan coming back from that injury and being able to play at all. Mm -hmm. And he played at a high level for most of the year. But in hindsight, like maybe we glossed over the fact that he missed winter workouts, missed spring, mm -hmm. and those reps. Now that he gets that, I, I, obviously it's going to make some difference. Yes. Where will it show up? It, 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 it's making a huge difference, you know, because now he has a spring under his belt, where last year he didn't have a spring. But the thing is, we, we don't make excuses. You know, we don't, we, don't, we don't say, well, he didn't have that. If you're out there for the Buckeyes, the expectation is that you play at an elite level. And, and you go out there and make plays and execute the defense or the assignments that's asked of you. You mentioned streamlining Sonny's role. Is that building off of what he did in that Georgia game? Yeah, to a certain degree, absolutely. Absolutely right. What do you, what do you think that role can look like? I mean, you know, it, it still remains to be seen, you know. I mean, we're kind of dabbling in some things, you know, and this kind of really and truthfully, we want him to be great at specific things instead of okay at a lot of things. So that's the conversation, what I mean by streamlining. So you won't see him in a lot of places. You'll see him pretty stationary in one to two spots. The kind of buzz has been. He, yes, yeah. absolutely. The buzz has been he's got to get on the field somewhere. I mean, it seems like he's that kind of player. But what's the buzz like when, when y'all talk about him? I'm, <laughs> I'm a truth teller. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I know his strengths. I know where he's challenged, and I know what we got to do to continue to get better. Um, but he is definitely going to help this football team you know, win games and execute at a high level. Gary, what do you see from Malik so far? Really, really good. You know, Malik has come in and he just worked. Um, you see the talent that you saw when he was at Lakota West. Um, he's extremely smart, high football IQ, very, very humble young man that has come in and he's shown flashes of what he can be. He's still learning the game of football as far as on the collegiate level. But I tell you what, I've been pleased with what I've seen so much. He finally, when he was at Lakota West, he played a lot bigger than he was. You guys have had, had pads on now for a week or so. Do you see that showing up already? He still or? does. He still does. So uh, so we're constantly on him about nutrition, and Coach Mick and the staff are on him in the weight room, and, and he's thriving. He's thriving. And um, I've been really, really pleased with his maturity and his growth to this point. A lot of the guys have talked about being year two of the defense. You mentioned familiarity a couple times. Does that apply to the coaches too? You guys are now together for a second year. You know what Jim wants out of the defense. <clears throat> is it is it more of a cohesive unit than maybe this time? Of year? Absolutely, you know, absolutely. You come in and, and, and you're in, in, installing a new defense, and then obviously you're, you're getting to know each other too, and and work with each other, and then obviously you got new players. So there's a lot of dynamics that, that play a part in, you know, first year. But now, absolutely, I mean, there's so much flow. Chemistry. Not saying there was there wasn't any last year, but it's just a different flow and a different vibe. And, and, and it's a lot of smoother transition coming in this spring. And like I said, we know what our players are capable of doing, and now we can really, really hone in and put them in those spots and places for them to excel. Great. Coach, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you, man.